Hello, my name is Alan Foom, and today I'm going to talk about Playfair Way Evaluation, a way of focusing hydrocarbon exploration. This video is in four parts. So this is part one, which is about defining petroleum plays. Part two will be about using play statistics. Part three will be about estimating yet to find how much hydrocarbon could there still be within a basin or play. And part four will be about building common risk segment maps which is something that will be used to guide exploration. So what is play fairway evaluation? Play fairway evaluation is a uh, way of systematically mapping the elements of a petroleum play and defining areas where the play elements are likely to coincide which are likely to be more perspective. This is used to focus exploration efforts in areas which you believe to be more likely to yield positive results. It's also known as play-based exploration or play fairway analysis. A little bit like a fairway on a golf course. So what's a petroleum play? So this is a diagram which looks at the different elements within a, within a hierarchy of a petroleum system. So at the very top you have a basin. So this is basically a, an area which is filled with sediment, which is likely to contain a source rock, a reservoir rock, and cap rocks, hopefully in the right order. Then there's a petroleum system. This is generally based around a common source rock, which feeds potentially different reservoir rocks, which are defined within petroleum plays. And within a petroleum play, you will have discoveries, prospects, and leads. Discoveries are where hydrocarbons have already been discovered. Prospects are uh, features which have been identified by geologists, which are likely, or maybe not so likely, to have hydrocarbons within them. And leads are figments of a deranged geologist's imagination. And believe me, the imagination of geologists can be fairly vivid. So this is a petroleum system. So this is basic petroleum geology. You have a source rock, which is normally an organic rich shale or organic rich mud rock. The organic matter is then cooked and hydrocarbons are given off from the organic matter. The hydrocarbons are buoyant. They float upwards until they reach a combination of reservoir rock which is a rock which has got pores in it, and hydrocarbons then go into the pores. Because hydrocarbons are buoyant, if there was no cap rock to prevent further migration, hydrocarbons will migrate to the surface. So you need a cap rock immediately above your reservoir rock to stop the hydrocarbons disappearing. You also need a tr petroleum trap, such as an anticline or a fault block, which is a geometric feature within the subsurface which enables hydrocarbons to be trapped. All of these have to be there, all of these have to work. I've talked a little bit about that in my video on petroleum risking. So why do people use play fairway evaluation? It's a way of systematically mapping the elements of the petroleum play, systematically mapping your reservoirs, systematically mapping your top seals and how they interact with the reservoirs, with also potentially side or base seal for stratigraphic traps, systematically mapping your source rock, where are your source rock kitchens, how mature are they? You also you do a little bit of structural elements mapping to constrain the features to produce you a fully coherent map. Within that context, you will also do prospect mapping, where you map individual features which may or may not contain hydrocarbons. So play fairway is where all these three things work together at the same time. You have a reservoir present, you have a top seal present, and you have a self source rock close by. And use that to focus your exploration efforts. Uh, and then you do detailed prospect mapping within that context. So this is an example of a petroleum play from the Southern North Sea uh, between the coast of uh, Britain and Germany. So that's Britain, that's Germany. You can see Denmark poking up here. And this is from the Permian uh, and Carboniferous. So it's between 300 million years ago and 250 million years ago. So initially in the Carboniferous, 300 million years ago, you had the coal measures, swamps, humid environment, big deltas, and within those swamps you had coal, which is the remains of dead plants. Then climate changed, tectonics changed, everything became arid, and you had a desert. Within that desert you had a sandstone, Permian Rot Ligand, or red sandstone in German, and this covered most of this area in dunes, with also some wadis, some sabras, and other, and other features to uh, within a desert depositional environment. 
Then he had a marine flood, but it was still hot and still humid, so the sea evaporated to produce rock salt or halite and anhydrite and other evaporites. Now anhydrite and halite are very good seal rocks because they have virtually no permeability. So you have a triplet of your source, your reservoir and your seal within, a, within an area. So this is how a petroleum play works. Of course, it's not quite as simple as that because timing is everything. And this is a timing chart, which is something people use to uh, to put the plays into context. So this is geological time from the Devonian to present. So 400, 300, 200, 100 million years. You have a source rock. In this particular case, a source rock was from the Triassic through the Jurassic. You have potential reservoir rocks. Everything from the uh, Mississippi and Pennsylvania, this is an American chart, so this is Carboniferous, through the Triassic, through the Jurassic, and then through the Cretaceous. You may be asking, how can a uh, Carboniferous, Mississippi, and Pennsylvania uh, reservoir be charged from the Jurassic? You could have juxtaposition, where these could be thrown up into an upthrown fault block, and this could be a basin lower down. You could have migration. It happens. Then you have a seal rock. So these are potential seals that can happen within uh, within the geological record. Hopefully they're above your reservoir rocks and juxtaposed in the right way. Then you have your overburden, just rock, which is above, uh, above the potential trap. This is the time when you had structuration, you had triformation. And then you have uh, when the source rock was mature. And then you have preservation. So your hydrocarbons would have been charged in here. And then tectonic forces might have disturbed the trap and might have led it to leak. So all of this is put together to give you an idea of when and how things would happen. But play fairways are not a panacea. Now it gives you a complete picture of the basin, or what you think is a complete picture of the basin, but there's still quite a bit of uncertainty. You have to extrapolate from known data to areas which are there using your knowledge, your experience, but it's kind of a little bit of a danger for exaggerating things. Also, there's a danger of doing things too mathematically. If you're using grid-based maps with poorly understood thresholds, you could come up with all sorts of uh, situations. There are different types of map that you can have. Traditional one is traffic light, so green is good. Yellow is uncertain, red is bad. An element is stacked, and one red value basically discounts an area. Then you have your chance of success maps which I'll talk a little bit about uh, in, the, in the building the common risk map uh, segment of this video. And then also, how do you do risking, which again, I will talk about in that part. So they're not a panacea. Also, they do tend to railroad you a bit. So where does it fit into the workflow? So as a geologist, a geophysicist, you initially have the data. So that's your wells, your seismic, uh, GIS, uh, Glo uh, geographic information systems data. Uh, reports from other people, maps from other people. So the third-party vendors such as Neftex, uh, Robertson's Telus, and GTEC that provide reports that you can also integrate within that. So these are your external studies. You've got your play statistics, which I'll talk about later, your interpretation of all the data, geochemistry data for your source rock, petrophysics, your pressures, stratigraphy, sedimentology, all of that is brought together. And your products would be your structure maps, the positional environment facies maps, the well result analysis and the statistics, and the petroleum basin models. And from that, you get the common risk segment maps, maps for individual prospects, prospect and player analysis, portfolio analysis, and what impacts what. So I'll talk a little bit about one thing before I go into the play statistics, which is the well results analysis. So it's important to understand why wells worked and what they, why they did not. So, for example, we take two wells in the same area, well A, which was drilled by Omega, 1978, fictional company. 1999, Sigma came along, another fictional company drilled well B, fairly close by. Initial well was drilled on 2D data. People didn't really have a full understanding. Whereas here, you had 3D data. Much better picture, much better understanding. Uh, the wells were both drilled on a valid trap. They were actually both drilled on the same trap. Um, this is actually based on a true story. Uh, top seal, lateral seal, yep, they were both there. Charge, well, well A had kind of shows of hydrocarbons, so probably, whereas well B was a discovery. 
the reservoir presence in well A, because they were drilling on 2D data and didn't understand the reservoir system, they kind of winged a potential turbidite channel, and therefore they um, didn't really have a proper reservoir. Whereas well B, we had 3D data, we had an absolute anomaly, we drilled in the right place. Reservoir effectiveness, it wasn't effective in well A, it was effective in well B. And we had dry gas, and subsequent wells produced a fairly significant hydrocarbon resource. So this is how to do a well analysis table within that. You can then also look at possible well results. You have a hydrocarbon discovery, a dry well with good reservoir but no sign of charge, dry well with good reservoir but some low saturation or some evidence for seal failure, a well that's drilled outside your trap, a well where reservoir is absent, or a bypass well where a well was aimed at a deeper target, went through the play but didn't drill a valid, wasn't aimed at drilling a valid trap because they were looking for something deeper. An example from the North Sea, as you're going through the tertiary, you're going through the Paleocene, which is a major reservoir with the 40 system, and you're aiming at the Jurassic, for example, the Fulmar, where you will not have a trap in the 40 system, but you will obviously gain very valuable data on the reservoir distribution from this particular well. And then you can do a matrix from which you can do analysis of well failures and why wells failed. So you look at each well, so these are some fictional wells, completely fictional, and you put a why a well worked. So yes, 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 hydrocarbon discovery, yes, yes, maybe no, etc. for all of them. Then you look at your analysis, uh, well failure analysis by cause, see where particular failures are, and then look at uh, trap, seal, reservoir, source, and charge. You can see in this particular basin, charge seems to be the problem. So if you were to do more work in this basin, you would focus on building a, a really comprehensive basin model, doing a lot of sensitivity work on that, trying to figure out where the charge system is, but don't neglect other things. So this gives you a basic introduction to play fairway evaluation. So next video will be looking at play statistics and how they work. Thank you very much.